Okay, we'll uh, get started. I'll call on uh, on you in groups of two, and we'll start with Anthony Dasher, and we'll follow with Palmer Tomes. Hey, Xavier, good to see you for the first time. Yeah, good to see you too. Uh, I guess you just first of all, I mean, it's obviously that, that you know Coach Luke has a lot of confidence in the way you're playing. Now you got the step right in for Warren when he got sick last week. Kind of where do you feel your your own individual game is kind of taking that next step to put you in the spot you're in right now? Um. You know, I kind of credit that to, you know, everybody else on the O-line, um, you know, helping me out and make sure I'm on top of my stuff. Um, you know, if it wasn't for them, you know, they, they help build my confidence and make sure, you know, I'm, I'm ready to play. And, you know, obviously when, when my name's called, I got to be ready. Yeah, Xavier, wanted to ask about the move from tackle to guard. I, I feel like last time we saw you, you were playing tackle in, in the Peach Bowl, and, and it's not too often that you see a six-foot-seven guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the transition to guard, I mean, obviously it, it, it took some getting used to at first, but I mean, I got to be ready to play wherever I'm needed to play. Um, and I don't think height is an excuse. You know, last year we had we had Ben, who's on, about my height. Um, so, and there was no excuse, you know, Ben didn't have an excuse, so I can't, I got to just get in and play. If they needed me at center, man, I would learn how to play center and I would get in there at center. Okay, let's go to Seth Emerson and followed by Connor Riley. Xavier, uh, you could probably answer this in a long version, so I know you want to keep it short, but how in Rhode Island, where exactly did you live? How did you get discovered? How did the word get out on you? What what's you new? Know, because there aren't, there aren't many guys that come out of Rhode Island at all yeah. and not many end up in the SEC. For sure. So I'm from a small town, West Warwick, Rhode Island, um, and I went to a school called Bishop Hendrickson High School. It was an all boys private high school. Um, and there, you know, I didn't really start getting recruited until my junior year. Um, I was always a track guy. I threw track. Um, I thought that's what I was going to go to college for is for, for throwing track. Um, and my sophomore year, um, we had a senior by the name of Quiddy Pay who committed to Michigan for DN. He just went first round um, in this past draft. And I think all of the college coaches coming to see him and coming to visit him and his motivation um, for me, just seeing a big kid who had so much potential and him pushing me um, helped mold my game and helped me become a recruitable player. So when all these coaches were coming um, to visit him, they stopped and looked, who's this kid? And that's when I started building relationships with, with college coaches, going on visits and getting recruited. Hey, Xavier, I wonder if you could take me back through last Saturday. Were you expecting to play? And then when your number ultimately does get called, how did you think you performed on the road at Tennessee? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, I always got to be ready to play. You know, that's why we travel. You just always got to be ready um, when your name's called. Um, you know, how, how I played, um, I think I have a lot of things I need to work on and improve in my game. Um, but I think my teammates around me helped me stay in the game help keep me confident and, and cool and collected. Um, uh, obviously, you know, I missed a couple of things here and there, but that's all, but that's all on me. That's about preparation um, and just being ready, ready to step in. Um, I think as a unit, I think we played well. We definitely all got a couple of things we need to work on, you know, finishing and stuff, but um, I'm glad we, we went into that hostile environment and got, got some work done. Okay, let's go to Chip Towers followed by Jake Rowe. Yes, I was just wondering in in the Tennessee game, did you expect to play that day, or was it? I know the the flu was running through the team, and um, apparently that was an issue with Warren. It looked like he tried to go, and then you found yourself in there pretty quick. And then, uh, if, if you don't mind, if you could talk to, you know, there's there's coming to play in the SEC, and then there's the realities of playing in the SEC and a place like that. I just wonder. I'm sure when you left home, everybody's like well, why aren't you starting or why aren't you that, you know, the star left tackle already, but can you uh, share some of the realities and toil that, that come with trying to play these positions at this level? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people back home, especially don't understand just like how competitive it is down here and, and how much talent there is um, just in the SEC in general. I know a lot of people were wondering why I even, you know, decided to go to the SEC and it's really because this is the best place to grow as a player. Um, and I understand that I wasn't a starter at first, but as long as uh, I'm becoming the best player that I can be, 
um, I'm going to play when, when my time's ready. And I think Saturday, my time was ready. I mean, when Warren went down, I had to step up big and go in. Uh, Xavier, I noticed uh, when you were playing the other night, I, I saw a couple times there on the sideline, Warren kind of had you, uh, you guys were kind of eye to eye uh, a little bit, talking, kind of right in each other's face about kind of what was going on. What kind of coaching were you getting from him? I mean, I know he's seen a lot, having played center, having played guard. H how helpful was he to you throughout that game? I mean, Warren's like my mentor, man. Um, you know, he's had a lot more experience playing um, than I have. So um, especially at guard. Um, so I knew that if I had any any questions or or if I was uh, wasn't 100 percent confident about something, I could go ask him and and, you know, he would steer me in the right direction. He would always he'd always tell me, you know, I would take the, the criticism for him or, you know, I would listen to him um, when he would tell me things I need to work on, you know, keep my hands up, um, feet moving, stuff like that. Um, help me in the game so I think he he helped a lot okay let's go to Tyler Griffith followed by Jake Jennings hey Xavier so after the last uh, game against Tennessee some clips went viral of you and some of the other offensive linemen you know getting up in the second level and putting some guys on their back is that something you really look forward to you know when a play is called like what goes through your mind um, when you know you're about to get to block some of those guys on the second level um, of course, you know, that that's that's going through my mind every play. And I'm sure it's going through everybody's mind and the rest of the line is just um, finishing your man. Um, you know, number one is just getting your assignment done and completed. And, and you know, after that, it's, it's finishing it. Um, and, you know, I always get excited when, when we get, you know, we get a play where I get to pull or, or stuff like that. It was my favorite thing to do um, when I was playing in high school. So I always get excited. Um, I just try to go out there and, and just compete, man. No question for me. I'm just sitting in today. Okay, we've got a couple of minutes left. I'll just open it up to anyone that's got a question. Yeah, Xavier, when you were making that move, what what, what was it that in your skill set that Coach Luke maybe said, you know, hey, we think that you would be a good fit at guard? And and going back to what you said about things that you feel like you could improve from the Tennessee game, what were a couple of those things? Uh, a couple of things I need to improve on is just uh, keeping my base. I think sometimes, you know, when I get up to the second level, I know there was a play where, you know, I bumped into, I, I got hit off the linebacker, bumped into some here. Um, just keeping my base, keeping my feet um, separated. I brought my feet too far in and can't cross your feet over. So um, things like that. And then um, keeping my head back on pass pro. Um, that's a big, that's something I've been stressing a lot um, at practice, trying to get better at, um, trying to improve on. Um, moving into guard, uh, really, I had never played guard before until um, this season. And, um, you know, when, when Tate went down against Clemson, you know, uh, we had, we had lost a guard then and, uh, we needed more versatile players. So, you know, I had to, I had to step up. He, we, we were going to see who could play guard. I, I stepped up. I said I could play and, uh, man, I've been at guard ever since. Xavier, can you speak to what it's like going up against Jalen, Jordan, the Devante and w how they, compare if at all to anything y'all you faced um as far as games that I've been in uh this year I think we've played a lot of great defenses this year but I mean this this group of, of D linemen is just special here and I think um me as well as the other linemen just getting to day in and day out go against um in my opinion the best off the best defensive line I'm sorry in the nation every day um it, you know, it only makes us better. It only makes everybody better. Um, you know, iron sharpens iron. And <laughs> JD, Jalen Carter, them some big boys. And, and I think um, we make each other better in the end. What, what's, their, what's their reason? What's their secret sauce to why they're so good? They're relentless. I think they're, they're, they're relentless with their effort. Um, you know, you don't see a lot of plays where, they're, where they just give up or they, you know, they get beat and they give up. Um, they they finish they cover down at practice and it all translates to the games and and you can see it. Thanks. Hey Xavier, uh, in light of the recent viral clip, what is a Kirby Smart halftime speech like, and what is he really saying to you, those guys, before going out there in the second half? Um, you know, I haven't really uh, I heard much about the video. I haven't seen it. Um, I just heard a little bit about it, but haven't been focused on. I know Kirby, Coach Smart. Um, his, he just gets us motivated, man. Go, go. He wants us to go, you know, punish, punish him when we come out of the uh, halftime. So 
or pregame, pregame even too. You know, that's his job as a coach, just get everybody hyped up. So I think he does a great job of that. Got time for one more question. All right. Xavier, thanks for your time tonight. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you all.